Hello all, welcome to TechEd 2020. I'm Gopi Kanappan, Product Manager at SAP. In today's session, we are going to talk about SAP Graph. Let's first start with the agenda. We start the uh, lecture with an high level overview on the motivation for building SAP Graph. Then we look at a brief introduction on SAP Graph along with the problem statement and the value proposition for it. And then we take a look at key features and benefits of SAP Graph. With that, we jump into a short demo on SAP Graph. After the demo, we take a look at high level architecture overview, and then we conclude the session with a summary and key takeaways. Let's start with the motivation. Why are, why are we building SAP Graph? What better way to start than quote our CEO? Christian Klein uh, wrote in his blog a few months back in a LinkedIn blog where he said, every customer to become an intelligent enterprise and to able to run world's most mission critical business processes, they need an integrated system. They need an integrated system based on one data model. So that's what I'm emphasizing there, one data model. Because these are the key reasons why we built SAP Graph and few other technologies around SAP Graph and around the intelligent enterprise. So with that, let's look at the introduction of SAP Graph. So before we dive into SAP Graph, first thing is to take a look at the SAP Graph, SAP's integrated intelligence suite. So you probably have been introduced already to the four end-to-end -end processes. I'm not going to go into detail about these processes, but all these processes are not built by one product. They are basically uh, different business systems coming together, fulfilling these end-to-end -end processes. So when you want to build multi, uh, bring multiple business system together to build an end-to-end -end, uh, solution, then we need certain qualities for these solutions to come together. And that's what is addressed to this, through the suite qualities. And the business technology platform is the platform that enables these qualities to be addressed and for these business systems to work in an integrated suite manner. And again, uh, these uh, suite qualities are not all of the suite qualities. They are some of the key suite qualities. And I don't want to go into each of them in the session, rather focus on one, which is more relevant to SAP Graph. Let's go to the next slide. And what is the more relevant for SAP Graph is the aligned domain model. So going back to the quote from Christian Klein, where he said one data model, and that is basically creating a, creating a lingua franca in SAP that allows SAP to SAP communication easier uh, consistently. And that is what is the goal of this aligned domain model initiative. And resulting of that is one domain model. So ODM, that is what it's called. And Graph basically fits in on top of this. Graph provides a unified API that talks, that basically reflects this aligned domain model. And using this API, you as a customer can access SAP managed data, irrespective of where this data resides. And essentially the business technology platform facilitates this. So SAP Graph on its own, relies on this domain model for the API semantics, but also it relies on the business technology platform to provide the necessary foundation services to connect to SAP landscape, SAP line of business applications. So with that set in, set con in context, let's look at the problem statement. What are the challenges that we are trying to solve? Uh, here we are looking at an extension challenge. So SAP business system have become silos. Each of these systems, not all of them, but some of them have their own distinct security. They have their own tenancy model. There is also inconsistency in the APIs and protocols. And of course, the data model itself is also different. One of the key reasons to have the aligned domain model initiative to build a common data model across the SAP landscape. And all of this leads to challenges for a partner or a customer who's building a solution 
in this case, it's represented as a client application that works across the SAP landscape. So in this case, the developer who's building this client application needs to understand the domain model of these business systems, also understand the protocol, uh, work with these protocols. Some of them are REST, some of them are OData version two, some of them are even SOAP. And they also have to work with different security models. They have to build all of that into the client application. Obviously, how, what does it mean uh, to the developer, or to the customer, or to the partner? It basically means there is a higher entry barrier. You have challenge in getting the right skill to build this application. Also, there is a limited portability because when you build this client application bound to each of these business system with their own security model, tenancy model, et cetera, that I said, then when you want to change the landscape, when you are now replacing your business system with a newer, newer uh, solution, you will have the challenge of porting that in the client application also, not just in your landscape, but also in your extension apps and so on. It, obviously, all of this results in productivity deceleration, innovation decelerates, and also all the complexity is exposed on the client application. Now, how does uh, SAP Graph addresses this challenge? SAP Graph provides a unified API, a unified API that is graph-like, representing the domain model and allowing the uh, developers to build against this one API. And this allows the developers to work against the RESTful API to navigate and access SAP managed data across SAP system, regardless of where the data resides. Obviously, this results in lower entry barrier, higher portability. Obviously, lower entry barrier because they know, now have to learn only one API. They have to work against only one API, one protocol, one security model. So that allows them to get onto this quicker and portability by, if in case the business system itself evolves, if they change from today success factor to some other, some other business solution, then the change has to happen only in the graph layer. There is no need to change the client application itself. The graph has to be configured for of this uh, different business system and the client application doesn't have to change anything because they built against the SAP Graph APIs. It also increases productivity because again, the developer, is, uh, uh, developer comes on board and builds the solution much quicker. Speed of innovation increases. And also the complexity is much lower in the client application than what it was in the previous uh, slide. So that is basically setting the scene for graph, why graph is needed. Now let's look at the key, uh, uh, the purpose of the solution, what it means for our customers and partners. One of the key reasons for us to build it is also to nurture our ecosystem. We want to enable everyone to collaborate with SAP. We do that by making graph APIs public APIs with open standards. And also we provide through these public APIs, open standard APIs access to SAP managed data, both on cloud and hybrid. And with this, we wanna reach all developers, be it customer, be it partner, be it freelancers to take advantage of graph APIs, build extensions, build solutions, build uh, reusable uh, products, apps, and then bring that into the ecosystem. We want to make this as a cycle so that we, we build a nurturing, self-serving ecosystem for our customers, partners, so on. So now let's look at the key features and benefits of Graph. Graph is a multi-tenant scalable SaaS offering. 
It consists of one interface, one API endpoint, basically one API to all data, all SAP managed data. It allows to access master data, but also transactional data. So it is not limited to one type of data. It provides a unified authentication. So when a client, uh, when a user uses Graph API, they don't have to authenticate against each of the business system that is connected on, in the landscape, that is available in the landscape. They just need to have authenticated once. It's built on open standards, SAML, ODATA version four, OAuth, et cetera. It will support all end-to-end -end intelligent enterprise processes. Today we have four, as we go on this journey, if we have more, that will also be supported. And it also allows routing capability so that you can also route to, uh, uh, to different source system. If you have configured your customer API, graph API to go to a specific C4C system, then in future, you can also have more complex routing where, wherein you can say that if customer type is X, then go to C4C. If customer type is Y, then go to uh, another business system. And it also can be more advanced routing. Principal propagation is key because SAP Graph API access is based on user. So it's user-based access. That means a user who logs in, accesses this Graph API, that user principal is propagated all the way down to the underlying LOB applications so that the LOB applications can authorize this user for the data access. So now let's look at what it means uh, for benefits. Probably I'm repeating some of them from the previous slides. I talked about the, the value or addressing the extensibility challenge. One of them is speed to innovation. So SAP Graph allows a lower entry barrier for developers. That way you can get faster to building solutions on top of Graph. It also focuses on business objects and semantics. That way you don't have to think about protocols and authorization model, et cetera. That also means that, that it eliminates the complexity that exists today. We provide a sandbox experience that allows developers to jumpstart development. You don't have to have a full landscape. You can come start your development with a sandbox where there is a sample data and from there you can build on top and you can build against that and then you can move that solution app extension to the landscape where you have real business systems. It allows portability, it provides this layer that allows you to change your underlying business system as you evolve, as your process in your organization evolves for own reasons, for, uh, for uh, digital transformation or for compliance, et cetera, this allows, uh, SAP Graph allows you to do it much easier. And last but not least, uh, provides a vibrant ecosystem. The goal, one of the goal, key goal that I mentioned, purpose, one of the key purpose that I mentioned is the ecosystem factor. We want to enable our customers, partners to build solutions that allows others to easily uh, get their extensions done so that there is a marketplace for this and then um, uh, other customers can leverage it. So that concludes the key benefits. And now uh, we take a look at uh, uh, before we look at the demo, let me first clarify something. This probably is a question everyone I talk to have asked. So I want to um, make this clear before we go into a demo is how SAP Graph is different from other SAP API solutions. One of the questions that I've been in, encountering now is how is it different from API Business Hub? It is vastly different. API Business Sub is the API catalog. It's the central catalog of all the APIs for SAP. So you can go in as a developer, or you can go in as a user, customer, developer, you can discover uh, SAP's APIs and explore these APIs, and it will continue to, to be the same. Graph as a product 
API will also be listed in API Business Hub as an API. So graph is not a separate API or it's not its own API Business Hub or it's not an evolution of API Business Hub, rather graph, SAP graph is a unified API that provides access to SAP managed data in the ODM semantics. And so it will be listed as an API in the API Business Hub. There is another tool in SAP that's API management. And this will, uh, will exist as a tool for customers to build their own APIs on top of SAP application. In fact, Graph itself uses an API management under the hood. So we eat our own dog food. So with that, let's go and take a look at uh, what is SAP Graph. It's demo time. You're looking at the public beta website of SAP Graph, beta.graph.sap. In the header, you would find API Explorer link, getting started links, documentation for the APIs. On the right side, you find the uh, find ways uh, to provide feedback to us, find ways for you to register, and also for registered users to log in. Let's go to the API Explorer. The API Explorer assembles like a postman. You have a request session section, and there is a response section. On the right, there is uh, entities and links to the entities. So whatever entity that you are viewing, what are the other entities that it's linked to, and also a list of all the entities that are currently supported by SAP Graph. Let's uh, run the customer entity query. So here you can see many customer responses are there. And currently this is served by a API sandbox. So this sandbox is a public sandbox and it's a read-only sandbox. So you can see that only the get operations are enabled and the, the post patch or the write operations are not enabled. So let's pick uh, one ID and then try to filter and, and then see the customer order. So let, let's go from the customers to customer order. So I chose an ID. So let me put the ID in here. Now I'm running the query. So now what I did is looked, at, looked up a customer and looked up the customer orders. And I see that the customer order has a lot of items or there are multiple orders here. So let me go into what are the items that are available within the order. So I'm running the query. So I see that there is one item that is part of this order. Now from, you can see that from the order, I narrowed down into the items within the order and now let me go to the specific item itself. So I enter the item number, and of course, there's only one item. If we had multiple items, you would get it filtered down to this one item, but here I had only one item. So it just came back. And in this case, you see also that uh, we have a lot more information within the item. There's also a link to a product from within the item. So there's a product ID. So let's navigate Without uh, going out of this URL, we can also navigate to the products. So basically this is, sorry, to the product. And you can see that this is the product, the, the item that was, uh, the product that was associated to the item within the order. So you can see from the customer order, I went to the item, narrowed down to the item within the order. And then from there, I went to the product that is associated to that item. And now we, I can also narrow down with, with, within this query to a, to a specific field within this product. So for example, I can take the name, then run the query. Then you can see that the name is coming back. So what I demonstrated is from one entity here, customer order, I was able to navigate to another entity called product.
and in your in a customer landscape potentially these two entities might be mastered might be governed in two different systems customer order might be in commerce cloud sap commerce cloud and products might be in sap s for hana so in one query we are able to go from one system to another system and there are also further options for you to filter or for you to search on these entities so you can also try this out since this is a public api sandbox you can also navigate to beta.graph.sap to the api explorer and you can also perform these tasks now the difference with the registered user is once you register you get a private sandbox private api sandbox where you have the option beyond get you also have the option for post patch and delete for example here i'm i logged in and uh, with the logged in user i can go to the api explorer then i will you can see that i also have get post patch and delete operators and in addition you will also find that there is a way to copy the token for the registered users and then you can use this token within your postman to query this specific api sandbox with that the demo ends you can go to beta.graph.sap explorer and try out the public API sandbox. And you can see the uh, ODM compliant SAP Graph APIs in the read-only mode, or you can register and get your own private sandbox and try out also the right operations. The benefit of the right operation is, of course, you can put your own sample data and then build an app which reflects the data that you want to show to your maybe customer, your manager, or so on. And of course, the most important uh, part that we are looking for is any feedback from you. Any feedback about the product is always welcome. Now, uh, let's go into the high-level architecture overview. How, what, how does it work under the hood? So for the architecture, I took two personas. There are more personas that are involved in SAP Graph, but for the simplicity of this session, I took two personas to explain. So one of them is, of course, you, the developers. The entry point for you, the developers, would be always API Sandbox, uh, the API Explorer, or the API Business Hub. Through both model, you will be able to come to SAP Graph, start exploring the Sandbox, and after that also connect to a real landscape and then explore the data from the real landscape. And the resultant of what the business, uh, what, what the developers do is an app that a business user will use. So in this case, let's go to the business user to, uh, to uh, navigate through to, uh, to the to the end to end flow of SAP Graph, how it works. The business user will access the app with their user credentials. So they will uh, get, in, um, get into it with their login ID and password. And once they do that, and access the graph API, they come to the API gateway, SAP Graph API gateway. And here, the normal gateway specific functionality is taken care where the token is validated and also the necessary threat protections and uh, the throttling, all of this is taken care. Once that is validated, then it is sent to the routing component. And routing component is where it, the decision is made uh, on if the requesting API entity is customer, which of the LOB business system applications in the landscape is the source system for this data that is configured in the routing. Routing also uses some of the internal services, which in turn uses some of the cloud platform, SAP cloud platform services. And here you could define the the customer object uh, to be uh, the source system for the customer object to be a specific LOB system or maybe multiple system based on certain criteria. And once the router component define, decides that then it goes to the graphlet and the graphlet especially does connectivity part. So it connects to the identified 
business system and it does a couple of activities on top of it. One of them is protocol transformation. So if the underlying business system's API is REST, then it basically transforms that into a OData v4. And on also it does mapping. That is if the underlying LOB applications API is not ODM, a ODM compliant API, that is the lingua franca that I mentioned, and is still the LOB specific domain model, then it does the mapping. And, and once it does these two activities, then the response goes back to the app, the app that the business user was using. And basically uh, that is where they get the data. And also one more thing to uh, mention here is, as I mentioned in the key features section, that principle is propagated, that is, the user, the business user who logs into the app is prop, the principle of that user is propagated down to the business system so that the business system decides if this user has the right authorization to access the data or not. So we don't uh, push this authorization model into the SAP graph landscape. And another thing you would have noticed that in, there is no persistence mentioned in the picture. At, uh, persistence on the SAP graph layer because SAP graph doesn't persist this data. Every time the user calls this API, we always go to the, the specific tenant of the business system and get the data from that tenant of the business system. We never persist any data. At least that is in our current plans to not persist any data. One of the key purposes for this is one is to ensure that we don't have to replicate all the authorization model in SAP Graph. If you persist the data, we need to do that. And two, we also make sure the data is fresh. The data that we deliver is fresh data. That is the data that resides, uh, that is the current, um, current, uh, purpose, purpose, uh, current value of the data from the business system. And another thing that you would see in the uh, architecture is MDI, that's the component on the, on the bottom. Uh, MDI is another component that's not part of SAP Graph, but another component that is built as part of the Intelligent Enterprise uh, Suite is uh, essentially used for replicating the master data cross. Another key thing to uh, note here is SAP Graph is also not ensuring the consistency of the master data across the business system, but rather this is expected that this is already done. So it can be of course done with this MBA, MDI component where you can synchronize the data across your landscape, or you probably have already established other ways to synchronize your master data by using uh, other tools like MDG, master data governance tool, or you could have, you probably are using a CPI uh, iFlow to also synchronize your data. So that is how we do, and this is only a brief overview. I'm sure there are more material in SAP Graph website that you will find interesting or interested to go over for a deep dive into the architecture. Now with that, let's go to the summary and key takeaways. So what we looked at uh, today is a high level overview of SAP Graph. And what we learned is SAP Graph is the unified API to access SAP managed data. It provides a graph-like domain model that allows you to navigate from uh, entity to entity. This is also demonstrated in the demo. And as a developer, you have a RESTful service through which you can navigate and access this managed data. And Graph is based on open standard that allows you to plug and play with your solutions. The expected release for Graph is 2021. So that concludes the session. But before you go out, uh, here are further information for you to get uh, more knowledge on Graph. There's one more session, IAS 110, where um, my colleague talks about extending lead to cache using SAP Graph. And also there are further material in these public SAP websites, which you can go and explore. And also there are uh, a lot more learnings in SAP at SAP TechEd 2020. There are also 
um, this learning experience via SAP Learning Hub. Register, activate your free access for this. There are tons of learning materials that you can use to skill up on SAP. And also you can register and validate your skills. With that, I thank you for attending the session. If you have any further inquiries, you can contact myself, gopi.kanappan at sap.com or haim.bentelect at sap.com. Thanks for listening and have a wonderful ticket.
Thank you.